All right, stuck inside, nothing to do, we're locked down. We're going to cover the tools that you need because you decide it's time to take up woodworking as a hobby. You got nothing else to do, so let's go get some tools. Ray Ruth in here. Welcome back to the Woodcrafting Place. Today, one of my favorite topics, we're talking about tools. That's right. If you decided you wanted to try making some boxes or some cabinets or something like that, we'll cover what tools you might want to add to your shop. Now or at some point, pick up along the way. Things to make your job easier. And of course, you can always get more tools. This video is particularly focused for those of you who already have your basic DIY toolkit. If you don't yet have that, you'll want to take a look at our basic DIY toolkit video to help you get started easier in your woodworking. If you like what you see in today's video, don't forget to hit the thumb and like. Let us know that we're bringing you good information and we're covering the right topics. And click on the subscribe and the bell. That way you get notified each week of all the woodworking content that we bring you. So, Okay, but before we get started, I just want to give a shout out to all of the medical professionals and first responders out there. You go into harm's way every day while we stay home and safe, so thank you. You are our heroes. And for those of you who have some N95 masks or you've been had in your shop or some gloves, if you have some rubber gloves that you don't need right now for your family, send them to your local hospital or your local medical professional. They're out there taking care of us, so let's do what we can to take care of them. And so one of the things that I get often in my woodworking, Facebook, and social media posts are questions. Hey, what tools do I need? What do I buy? They want to know what to buy first, so we're going to cover that. There's going to be two pieces of equipment that really your workshop revolves around. First one is your table saw, which is a great tool for cut, ripping very accurate widths of wood as you're making them, and lengths, and putting it angles, and doing special cuts for coving and edge work. You can put fancy edges on wood if you want to. If you have a really small space, you might consider a job site saw. Just make sure if you're gonna do furniture and you're going to want to put a dado blade or dado stack set in the saw that you buy a saw that can take a dado blade down the road. And the other is the workbench. So you need a place to work and a workbench is another central piece of equipment. Little basic guidelines for your workbench are first the bigger the better. As much room as you have, no one has ever said, gee, my workbench has too much extra room on it. And you want to make sure your workbench is as big as the projects you plan on doing. A lot of woodworkers will build a large bench and then drop a small table saw, like a job site saw, in the middle of it. But I'm going to tell you before you go out and buy a saw and build a bench or something like that, stop. Plan your shop out first, right? I recommend you go to a website, which you'll find linked down below, Grizzly Tools. They have a great page that's linked down below where you can actually create a workshop layout. They have all the graphics and you could actually do a scale layout totally free it doesn't cost anything to use it so we're going to look at some other tools you want to include them so that you will be able to produce Accurate results, straight, repeatable, 
have good precise joints, shapes, and finished product so you get the aesthetic view, the size, and exactly what the plan called for really fit your need. Uh, so one tool that you might very well include in your shop is a joiner. You don't necessarily need a joiner. All right. Great thing about wood today that you buy in the store is you frequently get it fully plain, the final thickness, with one good straight edge on it. But somewhere along the way, as your woodworking skills increase and you decide you want to get into more exotic wood that you buy from a wood mill instead of the big box store, a joiner is a great thing to have. A joiner is essentially a tool that puts a straight, flat edge on a piece of wood and it gives you a nice precise edge. Everything goes off of that one first edge. Drill press, there's one that you may find very useful. There's all kinds of op options out there and sizes. A bench top drill press will do fine for drilling material with limited thickness, but if you need to drill two inches or more, a bench top drill press will be limited. That you're going to want to have tools like band saws or a scroll saw. You can see pictures here of those various tools. Those are very handy for cutting shapes. You can also use them to cut wood uh, down the middle in thickness. A bandsaw will do that for you. Bench grinders, bench top sanding, sanders. So what about a uh, surface planer? I haven't mentioned it yet. For most projects, you're going to find that the wood you buy from the big box store, and in a lot of cases from the wood mill, is already planed. Or you can pay them to plane it for a small fee. You don't need a surface planer. One power tool, which you probably noticed I did not talk about, and that is a radial arm saw. I know they're popular out there. There were a lot of them on the, on the market. I don't recommend you get one. They are dangerous, more dangerous than a table saw and they're really only good, really meant to do one thing the way the engineers designed them. And that was for a cross cut. The miter saw does very well. The miter saw is much more controlled than the radial arm saw. I don't recommend it. it's a great tool, especially for the beginning woodworker's shop. Another tool you might want to consider is a router. A router is a perfect tool that you can use to, you can put dados or, or, or grooves, different kinds of joints. Router does a great deal of things. You can also use it like a planer. Beyond that, there's lots of hand tools. Another tool you want in your toolbox for woodworking is you're gonna want a combination square. These are super handy. Obviously, they give you nice square angles for checking, it, marking, what have you, but they give you your 45 as well. Come with this precision ruler attached to it, and it can be adjusted. You want one of those in your toolbox? You're gonna to wanna to have clamps. Clamps come in a variety of shapes. These you're gonna use for assembly, right? Basic F-style clamp. This is probably the most useful of all the clamps I have, this style clamp. Again, Harbor Freight, great place to buy these. I think this one is like $2.99 or $3.99. Pretty inexpensive. Now, if you're gonna buy this type of clamp. This is another one of those tools. I don't recommend you buying the cheapest one on the market. These have a hard time with the locking mechanism in here. Buy the better brand name of the speed clamps. These are much better. Pipe clamps. The great thing about this style clamp, you buy the clamp pieces separate and then you put whatever length bar you need. If you need a one foot clamp, you can put a one foot bar in there. If you need a six foot clamp, you can put a six foot bar in there. So some of the other things you're gonna to wanna to add to your shop. 
course, are sanders, right? Projects that have large flat surfaces, you're going to want to build sander. Another sander that I use on almost every project with a flat surface to it is a palm sander. It's an orbital palm sander. The face of it goes circular, back and forth, and you can buy sandpaper or mesh sandpaper in the Merca. They come with hook and loop. So it's easy to peel off. And I can go through sanding grits from an 80 grit all the way up to a 600 grit in no time. Paint myself a glass smooth finish. Other things you're going to want to keep in mind that you may or may not need are dead blow hammer, throw that in there, chisels, you want to have a your basic set of hand chisels, you'll need a sharpening stone for those chisels, a drill doctor. You start throwing three, four, five dollars each time at a drill, once you use it for a project and it's dull and you can't get it right, money adds up. Eventually, you're going to find that if you get a learn how to use a drill doctor and actually not hard look up above you'll see the link and really save yourself some money you're going to want a shop back or some kind of dust collection in your shop okay so let's talk about wood turning wood turning is a unique kind of woodworking unlike most types of wood processing wood machining which have a blade that spins really fast and you feed the wood slowly Wood turning is unique because in wood turning, the wood is spinning fast and the blade is fed, is fed into the fast turning wood slowly. So your wood spins in a machine called a wood lathe, which you can see here. And there's really two different types of wood turning. There's a spindle turning, which is held on two ends typically, or a bowl turning. The bowl turning is held primarily on one end and then you remove wood and shape it accordingly. So for wood turning you're going to have a variety of different chisels and these will be used in different applications of different types of wood removal and you'll learn that depending on what you like to do uh, you will get specialized tools and techniques. Okay now wood turning chisels there's a variety of wood turning chisels, there's just a few. Starting with your basic roughing gouge. Roughing gouge that you can see here. This is used for spindle turning. So when you have a square spindle or whatever shape it is and you need to turn it round, this is what you use. You can see here. For removing a significant amount of wood quickly. Rough edges, this and this is a large one they come in multiple shapes and sizes you can see here one safety caution the roughing gouge is not for use on a bowl the inside of a bowl next we have a spindle gouge you can see here this is for doing finer shaping of the spindle Next, we'll go to a skew, a skew chisel, which is also a very good tool for planing down square, not round wood. Also used for finishing. You can use this for making beads. You curve it over or for doing other types of curves on the spindle. You get a much nicer finish with the skew, which requires a lot less sanding. And then we have our parting tool. You can see here's the diamond parting tool. The middle is wider than the outsides, so that way it doesn't bind. Basically the shape of a diamond. Um, you'll need one of these because you will use this to give you the right depths of a spindle. And the last major type of tool here is a bowl turning gouge. So this is a bowl gouge. This has a different configuration. It's a full round, you can see here. 
it's designed to take more stress than the roughing gouge is. That way you can go inside the bowl into a deeper groove to hog more material out. So those are the major types, to, along with the chisels, you're also going to want a faceplate. Frequently these come with delays. You see I have a wood block already attached to this one. I just used it for another project. I use these for especially handy for making bowls. So, faceplate. For spindle turning you'll need some centers. A spur center for driving the item and a live center. You will probably get items like this with the lathe and you may get and you might get one of these it's a, a dead center meaning it doesn't rotate you won't use this much right away and if you're doing spindles try not to use this because it's hard to keep the wood from mushrooming but hang on to it it's got uses the live center which I showed you here this is what you want this helps maintain a good spindle position and drill chuck. So a lathe is a great tool for drilling. Any round piece like a spindle or a bowl even or whatever on center it spins. The drill always finds its center. The way a standard drill is designed it will self-locate right in the center of that spinning piece of wood. So this is a great way to drill something on center. Last major accessory that you could you want to start with or consider at some point if you're going to do bowl turning is a screw chuck. This just tightens up, gets larger, and you have various jaws that can hold the inside, the outside. This is for you know four inches. You get for smaller, you can get larger, you get flat. What they call cold jaws, which can hold a big ball on them screw chuck you'll want one of those so I told you all about the tools question of the day what's the last tool you bought all right leave it in the comments down below and let me know so if you like what you saw today again don't forget hit the thumb don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell down below. That way you get notified each week of all the content that we bring you. I really appreciate you watching to the end. It means the world to me. Thank you very much, and you have yourself a great day. See you in the next video.